love and it's really fragrant. What is this? Uh, this is lemon balm. And uh, it's something you might find in your garden. It spreads all over the place, but it's really lovely. And as Mrs. Modgreave says, it maketh the mind glad. <laughs> well, that's a great one to talk about first on this medicinal plant segment. And we're at Portland Nursery on Division with Bevan, and she's really into this, gone to classes and really knowledgeable. And um, you have something else for us, and it's like, I know that plant, and this is what the flower looks like. Ah, echinacea, and we have some species of echinacea that are really great for enhancing the immune system. People use it for that and for infections. And Bevan, you know, I'm having trouble with my knees and some of my joints, and I heard that this was a good one. Arnica, that's great. People have used that for a long time. Um, they discovered it by watching goats who would rub their ankles on it up in the mountains when they got a hurt ankle. Ah, and there's some other plants that... Oh, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> You've heard about the horny goat weed, oh, that's otherwise known as epimedium. But it, it, right. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want any more information about that, you're going to have to come into the Division Street Portland Nursery. Now, I like this one, and this one I like just for a plant. It smells nice. What is this? This is a beautiful native plant, yerba buena, and um, it's used mostly to flavor tea. It has a wonderful flavor. It does. And to flavor other teas that may not taste that well that you need to take. Oh, okay. And you know, this one I think is a really famous one, but I forget the name. Oh, ginkgo. <laughs> and uh, it's used to increase blood circulation and especially in the mind. Ah, that's a good one to remember. Yes. And what's this one with the pretty flower? Oh, marshmallow. Uh, <laughs> it's mucilaginous. And so people use it for ulcers and you make a tea with it. Now, Bevan, what is this one here? Valerian that grows natively up in the mountains, and people use it for uh, to go to sleep. It's in it for insomnia and help you relax. And uh, but another thing about it is the roots when they're dried, the cats they go nuts for it. Oh, the cats like, they go crazy. It, like catnip. Yep. However, it smells like dirty socks, so oh, be prepared. Oh, okay. <laughs> now the Chinese herbs we can actually grow in the Pacific Northwest, and you have some available too at Portland. Yes, we sure do. Um, uh, we have lovely Cardenopsis or mm -hmm. Dongshen, which is a tea tonic, beautiful perennial plant. Uh, we have wolfberry, the le lychee, mm -hmm. and Bupleurum, among the few. But uh, yeah, we have a bunch of them. Now, if I wanted to start using this or making tinctures or something, I, I probably shouldn't do that just without any knowledge. Yeah, that's true. I definitely want to check in with a professional herbalist, uh, with the Chinese medicine, and your doctor and make sure there's nothing contraindicated with other medicines you might be taking. Ah, right. And I know that you have this great book that would help you get to I, know a little bit about those things. Yeah, definitely. Check this book out if you'd like to know, especially the natives and their medicinal uses and preparations. This is a wonderful book that can show you how to do it. Well, great. Well, I know there's many people on staff at the Stark Street Portland Nursery or at the Division Street, and they have tons of knowledge. So please come in, talk to the people here, and pick up some uh, medicinals for your yard.